Africa historically has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. All the economic structures, all the global institutions, and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. This is what it's about, because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. And that is a big price to pay. I assure you that the West is not going to allow that without a big fight. How these structures are operating by ideology. The job of many Western academics is to convince Africans they have to keep doing what they're doing. Okay? And to show them it's your fault that you're poor. It's not our fault. It's your fault that you're poor. You know? So this is what we do in academic institutions. I want you just show you the extent to which Africa is specializing in the production of raw materials and basic agricultural goods. Um, we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We know its colonization. With all these vast resources being produced, how much are they getting for it? Nothing. Nothing. This is a very significant piece of data. No country ever develops without manufacturing. Okay, producing raw materials will not take you anywhere. Producing basic agricultural goods will not take you anywhere. This is deliberate because we will never, as Western economists, as Western policymakers, we cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that, how we actually block that. It's obvious in certain ways, but it's less obvious in other ways. Bottom line, Sub-Saharan Africa is condemned to this role, just the supplier of raw materials, not a manufacturer. Their currency is being butchered. Okay, the currencies are collapsing of these countries, and many of them are sub-Saharan African countries. Relative to the rest of the world, sub-Saharan Africa is going to suffer. Again, why? Because it's condemned to this raw material production. This is basically why. How is it condemned to that? It's the economic structures. After colonization ended, we needed new structures to keep these countries where they were. The first of those is aid. We give them aid. We give them aid to keep repressive regimes in power. That's all. Okay, we're not giving them aid for much more except a little bit of infrastructure to make sure those raw materials get to the ports and are gotten out of the ground. This is what it's fundamentally about. All the hypocrisy about transparency and democracy and bullshit like that, it's all bullshit. <laughs> Number two, and this was a very important one, still is debt. Once you are in my debt, I control you. And if the president did not accept the loan, they were killed. The lending is also very important to trap the country. It's very important. It's part of that process. Once I catch you with the debt strings, I hold you forever. You are my prisoner. Okay, so debt has been this huge spider's web which has trapped sub-Saharan Africa and keeps them held there. Aid, debt. We have a third structure which is again not known by many people. It is monopoly buying structures. This is for all raw materials and basic agricultural goods produced by developing countries. There are only four or five Western multinationals that buy all those goods. And they collude between them. 
if you don't produce at the price I want you to produce, I go to the next country. You see, we get control. So these buyers, they impose that control and they keep pushing the prices down and down and down. Okay, this is the game. There are no commissions of inquiry to say, this is illegal what you're doing. The WTO has nothing to say about this. But sorry to say, you know, if banana prices rose 10 times, I protest. I like my living standards. Okay, it's the same with all the other raw materials, you see. We're all benefiting, we're complicit. We're actually complicit in this because we will protest and shout out if the situation ever changed. And I must tell you this from the outset, don't think of them as wicked. IMF, World Bank, WTO. We always think evil creatures, horrible. It's not. The rich declare war on the poor. It happens everywhere. It happens in a country. The rich control the government. Of course they do. You really believe you have democracy? Come on. What we have is the rich control. The rich set up these institutions explicitly to control the poor countries. And they don't give them much room for maneuver. We make sure they have recurrent balance of payments problems. You notice these countries never get out of balance of payments problems. You notice that? But the countries that are continuously getting advice and support by the IMF, they're always in balance of payments problems. Why? Because that's the way we keep our stranglehold on them. And they've also done something very, very important. And that is they have destroyed the self-sufficiency of these countries. Colonization started it. Okay? One of the most important things is we destroy food self-sufficiency. Okay? And the World Bank continued it. They forced most countries to eliminate all food subsidies and food support. A very funny thing happened some years ago, not so funny actually. It involved starvation of a large number of people in Malawi. But the Malawian finance minister, who was under terrible threat at the time, suddenly broke ranks and he said, well, you know why we had this famine? Because one of the conditions of the loan given by the World Bank was we destroyed all our grain surplus stocks. Why? Because remember, we want you dependent. This is the beautiful part of it. I'm, I congratulate them. You know I admire them because they do it so well. We have now in the WTO something called the Agreement on Agriculture. Okay? You know what that Agreement on Agriculture states? It says, if you don't have any subsidies, you're not allowed to put these subsidies on food. But if you have subsidies and income support for food production, you can keep them. Who has all the subsidies and income support? US, Europe. But the World Bank and IMF have destroyed all those subsidies. You see, all those subsidies have been destroyed. And now we're telling these countries, you don't have subsidies? Tough luck. This is the crucial thing. We cannot allow them to produce manufacturers. It's not difficult. Trust me, it's not difficult. You've read this book of Ha Jun Chang, Kicking Away the Ladder. You see, when we become rich, we make sure the others can't climb up the ladder and join us. I'm going to go to this economic ideology thing, because this is important for academics. You see, we teach, in many cases, garbage. Blah, 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 blah. And we don't know what we have learned, but anyway, we were there at the university and you got a certificate and you go away and you feel you've learned something. We teach very destructive things. And no more important than when we're teaching people from developing countries. Okay, and one of those very damaging and destructive things is the doctrine of comparative advantage. It's a lie from beginning to end. It's utter like crap. It has been decimated many times, but we keep it in every curriculum. Why? Because it tells sub-Saharan African countries that their destiny is to produce raw materials. And if you produce raw materials, you get rich just like we are in the West. Then we have the modern 
version of this is because it's all a failure, we know it's a failure, we now have a new generation of economists saying, ah, oh, it's only a failure because you're all corrupt in your countries. We call that new institutional economics. The aid was designed to actually start the corruption process in the first place. Okay, and we need corruption to make sure you're doing all these things. But now we blame the victim. You're poor because it's your fault, basically. And you're poor, stupid, and corrupt. This is where I come back to the IMF and the World Bank. You see, now they're all into poverty alleviation. But actually, I'm sorry to tell you, that is not what Africa needs. Africa needs aggressive industrialization. When China was a communist country and we had equal distribution, who feared China? Who took them seriously? They weren't even the size of the Netherlands. But today, I can't open an internet site. I can't open a magazine. I can't open a newspaper without China, 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 China. And we know what has built China. It's not socialism or communism. It's capitalism, guys. It's manufacturing. It's production. This is what creates employment. This is what creates the jobs.